Gigi Ashworth, the salmon salmon queen. <laughs> Welcome to the Keto Camp podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, here in Miami, they say salmon with the like hard L, salmon. But <laughs> you see my eyes popping out of my head right now. They put salmon. No, 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 no L's. They're not allowed to. I print. agree. I say salmon, but it's it's a, a Hispanic thing that they actually say salmon, salmon. But it, I agree. But anyways, if you ever come down to Miami, that's the way they'll pronounce it here, which might drive you a little crazy. I might just um, laugh constantly. <laughs> Before we get into how you even became the Salmon Queen, I know you went to school in Colorado for journalism, broadcast journalism. How did that even happen? Why did you decide to do that? And what transitioned into the health space for you? The funny thing is, is my life sort of evolved in both of those areas. So my mom's a doctor. My dad's obsessed with food. Put those two together and you have me. Uh, because my dad is my, well, first of all, I'm French. So my dad's obsessed with French cooking and he would always, um, as I guess a stress relief because he was working full time, he'd come home on the weekends and he would just make elaborate dishes and he would always involve my brother and sister and I, uh, my mom, as I said, she's a doctor. She's always been into health and nutrition. She was an OBGYN for 35 years, but if she had it her way, she would have been a nutritionist, she would have been a dermatologist, she would have been those types of doctors. Her father sort of forced her into the OBGYN field. Um, and I always remember going into her office or even just on the bookshelves in the living room, like I would see all these diet trend books like uh, Bob Green or whatever. <laughs> and Mercola was all over the place too. Um, and Mark Sisson, I started following him like 20, 20 years ago, which is crazy. Wow. Um, and I actually remember I followed him. I was on his forums and stuff. And then I met him in LA cause he invited me to a couple of his like house parties or whatever. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm fangirling so hard right now. Um, anyways, uh, that was a total derivation of what we're going with here. But so I was raised in an environment that food, nutrition, health was just sort of, it was life. And I also popped out of the womb with this vivacity um, and just wanting attention, basically. <laughs> the rest of my family is pretty behind the scenes. They're quiet. They, they're they not super bubbly and animated. But then there, there's me who's just like, hey, hey. And my parents are, my dad not so much, but my mom is like, oh, gosh, here she goes. Here she goes. Um, and I've even uh, asked her a couple of times if she, like, reads my captions on social media because they're not always PG. Um, so anyway, I grew up in that environment. I always wanted to be on camera, on TV. Initially, I wanted to be an actress, but I realized that I am not an actress at all. I can only act like myself. So I decided maybe the hosting route is the way to go. Um, so that's why I went to school for broadcast journalism. And initially it was, you know, that the serious stuff. It was like, oh, there was a car crash on I-95 and blah, mm. all that bullshit. Uh, and I also did the weather. I was the 3 a.m. weather girl. Mm. But I realized, like, I'm not, I'm not a serious person at all. I don't want to break hard news to people. I want people to forget about the the crap that's going on in life and just be like, Hey, I'm going to forget about my life for 30 for 30 minutes and listen to you talk about, you know, fun stuff. Yay. Um, so that's always been my goal in life. So I sort of navigated away from the news, the hard news, and I went into entertainment news. So I actually moved to Los Angeles when I got a job at E entertainment um, and I, I wasn't on camera there, but I worked for on camera talent. I also was part of their editorial team and I worked as a casting director's assistant. So I got a nice taste of all of those aspects and I worked there for a year. I also worked at another entertainment company. And when I was there, they were like, Hey, um, if you want to potentially be on camera, you need to create your own thing. You need to create your website and a YouTube channel and stuff. So when people Google you, they see what you're all about. 
So then I started a website called Gigi Eats Celebrities where I was making fun of diet and fitness trends of celebrities uh, because they were really – that was like the thing back then. It, this was back in 2011. It was like the cabbage soup diet, the baby yeah. food diet, all that kind of stuff. It was like fads galore. So I would always rip into those, make fun of them, and then I would give my honest opinion or – ideas of what people should do in order to live a healthier lifestyle, which basically at the end of every single video is like the same conclusion. It's like eat unprocessed foods, you know, shop the perimeter of the grocery store, that the, that sort of advice. Um, because I've been living a ketogenic, low-carb, paleo-esque, I call it the GG lifestyle uh, for the last 20 years because I have ulcerative colitis and IBS and celiac and a whole bunch of other autoimmune diseases as well as food allergies and intolerances. And this lifestyle just has made me feel the absolute best. Um, and, you know, I have all of these conditions, issues, whatever you want to call them, but I still live with this ha glass half full perspective because the way that I'm eating has truly helped me and my energy levels and just the way that I feel tremendously. Uh, and it just made me, again, realize that food truly fuels every single aspect of your life, everything in terms of how you feel, how you look, all of it. So knowing that because I've been my own guinea pig and I also have my master's in nutrition, actually, like I when I was in LA and I was doing my website and stuff, my mom sort of was like, you need to go back to school so you can have some clout in that area. So when people are like, why would I trust you? You can throw that diploma in their face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did. Uh, so I have that. I just got to throw that out there because I don't really talk about it very much. Um, so that's, that's kind of how that all started. Um, so it morphed from me doing entertainment news into more health-related content, into recipes, because my true passion is eating. I wouldn't say cooking. I'd say eating, because I like the, the end result. Yes. <laughs> and honestly, if you see me in the kitchen, I'm like, there's 2,000 tablespoons of this. I don't really care here. <laughs> and when I actually have to, like, measure things out and stuff for recipes for, like, my cookbooks or recipes I post on Instagram, I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in order for it to taste good and for people to actually appreciate what I'm creating, I kind of do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of me a little bit. Yeah, it's great. It's a great background. And, and I know the transition from broadcast journalism, being in the TV space, being a weather person 3 a.m. That must have sucked, by the way. To... I get up every morning at 3 a.m. I love early mornings. So. Oh, so you like that schedule? Oh, my God. I love it. Oh, okay. So that would have sucked for me then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I know the transition, though, wasn't easy. There was a time of your a point of your life where you mentioned all those health struggles that you were having. And there was a point where your brother actually gave you kind of a wake-up call and he said something to you, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, so... When I was diagnosed with all of these issues and food allergies and what have you, I didn't know what to eat because back then, the ketogenic paleolithic diets, they were not, what's that? Uh, but my mom knew about them because she's been doing the ketogenic diet even before I was born. Wow. Um, and she sent me this book that really explained things really well. Um, however, I went through this transition of being like, okay, well, I can't eat my, you know, mint chocolate chip ice cream and my pop tarts and nuts even. So like, what, what, what do I do? So I just, you know, kind of stopped eating everything. Um, and that was like my source of control, you know, then you get into the eating disorder because that's kind of why everyone is in an eating disorder, has an eating disorder, excuse me, because it's number one, body dysmorphia. And number two, you feel like you don't have a control on anything. Thus you control the food you're putting in your body. Um, so I went through that phase. I lost a lot of weight. Um, uh, inpatient clinics wouldn't even take me because they were like, you just have to go to the hospital. But I'm meant uh, like I, I'm very. I pride myself on this. I'm mentally very strong. So you know, I'm. I was obviously very mentally strong, telling myself, stop eating, stop eating, because you want to be thin. You want to be thin. 
to a point that my brother actually walked in to my bedroom one day and told me that I looked fucking disgusting. Mm. Uh, and that really, that triggered it for me because he, he and I had an interesting relationship because I went away to boarding school and that's kind of when every, all of my issues were diagnosed. And then I was kicked out of boarding school because they didn't want to deal with me potentially like dying on their watch. So when I went home, that's when I was sort of reintroduced to my brother who I didn't really have that much of a relationship with prior. And I didn't realize that he even gave a crap about me. So when he walked into my room and just told me that I looked disgusting and then like walked out, I was like, it was like someone smacked me in the face really, really hard. And that was sort of the beginning of the end of the eating disorder. Um, granted, I can't really say end because I feel like eating disorders sort of stick with people throughout their entire lives. I personally have no problems and I eat more than my husband and more than anyone on the face of the planet. But, you know, you have thoughts in the back of your mind once in a blue moon. But as I've said, I am very strong-willed, strong-minded, and when I have a vision in mind of what I want, I will do it. So, you know, I wanted to get better after that, and so I I really focused on eating healthfully, figuring out what foods worked for me, what didn't work for me, and it led me to really, really appreciate nutrition and health as opposed to just food. So then that's when I started, you know, reading all of those books that were on the bookshelves that my mom had for a million years. And I I remember reading like the blood type diet over and over again and the zone diet and all those types of things. Granted, I don't believe, I don't truly trust, believe those types of diet books because they're like 30 days and then you're done. And you're like, uh, what do I do after 30 days? It's a lifestyle people. You got to keep doing it, which is why I like the ketogenic paleolithic low carb lifestyle because First of all, it makes me feel tremendous. I'm not going to say it's for everybody, but it makes me feel super full. I'm I'm never really thinking about food unless I, you know, it's my quote unquote meal time, which people make fun of me because I literally get hungry at like 12 and 6 and they're like, oh, it's Gigi's feeding time. (laughs) Well, we're just about an hour and a half away from that. I know. Time. I am looking at the clock right now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> let's see if I can hold out. Uh, but I, I do only eat twice a day. I don't snack because this lifestyle just makes me so full. And it's, it's wonderful because then I can focus on other things that are way more important. Uh, and a lot of times people will eat tiny portions of rice and, you know, asparagus and pasta or whatever And then like an hour later, they're hungry and they wonder why. And all they're thinking about is food all day when it's like there are way more important things to be thinking about. Like go enjoy your life, have fun with your family and your friends, work really hard at at your job. But people just kind of narrow in on like, okay, what am I eating next? Yeah. Um, But with me, like, yeah, sure. Every single meal I know I'm going to have salmon. Let's be real. Um, (laughs) But, you know, once I'm done with that meal, like, I'm done. I'm done with my meal, and I can move on, and I can focus on other things. Uh, so, yeah. Now I totally forgot where I was going with this. I went on a tangent. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well okay. So you said salmon, right? And you're known yeah. as the salmon queen. How, how, did that, how did that even come about? Like, did you just start eating salmon? You just started to feel really good from it, started to research all the benefits of salmon? Like, where did that moniker come from? How did you even fall in love with salmon so much? It's interesting because I actually in my I'm I wrote a book and my second book it's uh, seduced by salmon it's not out yet but in my intro I wrote about this where when I was a kid I actually ran away from home oh my gosh I'm gonna sneeze so I I apologize I feel it coming on anyway um I ran away from home because my parents tried to feed me salmon for dinner. Wow. Uh, maybe when I was like eight or nine, I feel like before then I didn't really have salmon aside from maybe like it was salmon fish sticks or something, or maybe mm-hmm. it was just fish sticks and it wasn't actually salmon. But <laughs> I just associated fish with being gross uh, because, you know, none of my friends were eating fish. Uh, I did. I do recall us having like sushi Fridays, though. So we would have sushi. Um, that being said, they tried to feed to me. I ran away. I came home and I was so hungry that I actually went in the refrigerator and ate the salmon. And I was like, oh, this is really good. (laughs) (laughs) So there's that. 
Um, and then from then on, I, you know, I just became more enamored by the fish. And then I started to eat it basically every single day when I came home from boarding school. Uh, I started, uh, we, my family and I have been ordering from Vital Choice Seafoods. I don't know if you know that company. But yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We've been ordering from them for forever, ever since I was like 16 or 15 years old and I'm not 15 anymore. <laughs> so it's been a while. Um, so I started, we started ordering from them. I was eating their salmon all the time. And then I branched out and would go to like seafood markets and stuff with my dad on the weekends because as I said, he's really into food and cooking. He and I would create some really great seafood dishes. One of my favorites is salmon baked in clam sauce. Oh my God. Mm. Whoa. It's incredible. Uh, One of my favorite things on the face of the planet. Anyway, he would make that for me all the time. And then I went to college and salmon was just sort of like a comfort food for me. So... Whole Foods was down the street. I'd always get the prepared salmon because I didn't have any cooking things for the first year of college. And then when I lived in my apartment, I had full range and I'd go to like H Mart and I'd get all their salmon belly and I'd get, you know, all of the weird funky cuts because I'm into trying weird, weird things. Um, (laughs) Food wise, people, food wise. (laughs) Anyways, so... (laughs) I I don't know. So then I just started eating salmon every single day because it just made it. First of all, it's delicious. And I would always be like, oh, my God, when I'm eating it because I'm crazy. But and I think last night I was eating it and I said out loud, why are you so good? (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, so then I just started eating it every day and it just made me feel the best ever. Like uh, other food makes me feel fine. But believe it or not, I will eat like a pound of ground beef. And I'll eat a pound of salmon, and the ground beef will not keep me full for very long, whereas the salmon keeps me full for hours. I wow. know that if I eat, and I've, I have timed this out, I know that if I eat a ground beef burger, like a pound of it, around like noon, at four o'clock, I'm starving again, and I need wow. something. But salmon, I'll eat it at noon, and then, you know, come six or seven, I'm like, all right, all right, I could, I could eat some more. Um, so that's sort of why I gravitated towards salmon more than anything. And now I, my body just craves it. I just crave it every single second of every single day. I'm just like, salmon is happening today. <laughs> um, and then I started posting about it more and more and more on social media. And then someone DM'd me, I don't know, eight years ago, um, and said, you are totally the salmon queen. And then I sort of was like, all right cool. I'll be the salmon queen. Why not? So then just more often, I think I would like hashtag the salmon queen or I shared it once or whatever and just sort of caught on. And then I put it in my little bio and people, you know, those, those random scammy, um, trolls or whatever will DM me saying, hi salmon. And I'm like, oh my God, really? (laughs) Not to give away that it's a bot. (laughs) Exactly. Or they'll say the salmon. Yeah. 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 I'm like, well, Yep, you're you're not a real person. <laughs> that is well. It's safe to say you're getting enough EPA and DHA. You're you're not deficient in that. <laughs> That's actually for sure. um, the crazy thing is that I did an omega three fatty acid test. I took blood and I did that. I think I posted the results the other day, actually. And the typical amount of I think milligrams is what they were measuring it, and I can't recall exactly. But the typical amount of uh, uh, omega three milligrams in people's blood is around four or less mine was 19 and a half wow yeah so you're getting enough and and i think according according to the um nih the average adult brain needs about 7.2 milligrams so and i I don't know people are not getting enough they're not typically they're not so you are for sure you're getting more than enough which is why you're so creative and and excited right Your, your brain is so happy right now um that was yeah, and no worries. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So, well, you know what's interesting? You're gonna love this um, t-shirt I'm wearing right now. Salmon. Oh, see, you are so, a fan of salmon. I am, and here's something oh, else God. that you're gonna love. My logo. So my company is called Keto Camp Two Ks. Yeah. When I first had a designer create my logo, which is um, KK for the Keto Camp, they and I'll show it to you later. The KK is structured as salmon, the bones of a salmon. Okay, That's- I I love that. 
<laughs> that's my logo, my company I think logo. I you need to hire me to be part of your team just because. <laughs> Or I love salmon too. Logo everywhere I go, I'm just gonna be like your walking advertisement. I'm gonna just send you a T-shirt so you could represent it. I'll be okay with that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so yeah, I love salmon. It's great. You did ask me before we hit record, what's my favorite food, and it's not salmon, although I love it. It's it's like red meat. I do really well with it, but. I love salmon too. I'm not the salmon king. I don't know. Is there a salmon king out there? Is your husband the salmon king? No, he he let he would probably prefer a steak over salmon too. However, um, Michael Silverstein, mm -hmm. uh, Chef Michael, he was on yeah, he's great. Up, if you recall, uh, he is my salmon princess because <laughs> he loves <laughs> salmon and he got a tattoo of salmon on his arm, and then I put it in my mouth. Oh wow! Look at that YouTube. Look, show that again. YouTube. Show the YouTube. It says it actually says the word salmon on your lips, Gigi. Wow. Yes, because salmon's always in my mouth. Wow. Um, so we we have this joke that he's my salmon princess and I'm the salmon queen. <laughs> Haven't really dubbed a king yet, so I'm I'm doing auditions for that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, if you think you're a salmon king, email or or direct message Gigi at Gigi Eats on Instagram and let's see if you've make the cut, right? Yeah, and don't say hi the salmon cuz I won't yeah, we'll respond. <laughs> delete. <laughs> and Chef Michael is great. I got I love his work. I got to meet him in person um, during his charity event in uh, for KetoCon this past um, yeah. I think July. He's actually coming on my podcast soon, so he's oh, great. great. He's your, yeah, salmon princess. That's funny. Yeah, you should uh, bring that up. Be like, "So I will. I definitely will." And I wonder if he'll be like, "Wait. Wait. Oh!" <laughs> Yeah, that's the first I'm going to say, well, welcome to the show, Salmon Princess, <laughs> just to get his reaction. <laughs> oh, my God, that'd be so funny. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll let you know how Please it goes. Do. Um, okay, so you, you love salmon, you crave it, you eat it often. But what are the benefits behind salmon? And what's the difference between wild caught and farmed? Okay, so you know, there's a lot of people out there. In fact, I feel like a majority of the people out there think that wild caught salmon is the way to go. Uh, and it, once upon a time it was because farmed salmon was not regulated by anything. It was just, you know, put in pens, fed whatever it wanted or whatever they wanted to feed it, given antibiotics at the wazoo in order to make sure that they never got sick from what it was eating, um, added color, all of that. Now, since farming salmon started, things have changed. And this uh, farming salmon started taking shape in the 1960s. Around the 1980s, they started to regulate farmed salmon. And these days, farmed salmon is 20 million times better than wild salmon because wow. it is so regulated. And they're feeding it well, I mean, obviously, this is not every single farmed company out there. There are still CD brands out there, which is why I always tell people at the end of the day to do your research. Uh, one company that I adore and I'm constantly talking about is Quarry Arctic, and they actually supply their salmon to Whole Foods nationwide. Uh, it's their Norwegian How do you spell that? salmon. Uh, Norwegian salmon. How do you spell yeah. that company? Oh, it's K V. Uh, I can't even spell it without typing it. K V A R O Y. I literally had to type it on my keyboard. Oh, I see it. How crazy. How do you pronounce that? It's Quare Arctic. I didn't know how to pronounce it for a very long time. I had to watch yeah, multiple videos. Yeah, looks like Cavaroy. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it was embarrassing. Um, that being said, they supply nationwide to Whole Foods and then they also sell online. Um, but I just recommend going to Whole Foods and getting it because it's amazing. So nowadays, the fish is fed, you know, other fish that are super fatty. Like Quarry Arctic, for instance, has two times more omega-3 fatty acids than any other farmed company out there because mm. they feed their fish algae supplements and other, other super high in omega-3 fatty acid fish. Uh, and other salmon companies out there too, like Ocean Salmon, that's a company actually based in Florida. Um, they're another insanely delicious farm salmon too, and they feed their salmon really well as well. Um, and then there's tons of other companies, but as I said, like these days it's regulated so much because these companies, I mean, at the end of the day, they want to make a buck. So they want to make sure that their fish is top notch. So people continue to buy it. 
which makes complete sense. And then wild salmon, great, I'm not gonna poo poo it, even though I don't think it tastes as good as Atlantic or Norwegian salmon or Chilean salmon, Canadian salmon, because farm salmon is all over the world these days. Um, but I just, I don't think it's as tasty. It's, it's far leaner, less fatty, still has omega-3 fatty acids, which are the really, really, really healthy fats for you. Um, and they're really good for your brain health, your immune system health, your hair, skin, and nails, your heart health, literally just across the board, amazing fats that everybody needs in their diet. But as we said, people don't really get enough of it. Uh, and I personally don't believe that supplementing with pills is the right approach because while there are some companies out there that their pills are, are top notch um, and, you know, tested through, you know, the FDA a million times over stating that like they're totally fine. There are companies out there that, you know, just put fish oil in a pill and honestly the processing creates them or makes them become rancid. So they're actually doing more harm than good for your body, which is why I believe just eating straight salmon or other fish high in omega-3 fatty acids like sable fish, which is black cod or Chilean sea bass, or although some people think Chilean sea bass is a really big fish that has, you know, more mercury in it or whatever. Uh, and we can talk about mercury in a second if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and by the way, I agree about the fish oil. I'm glad you brought that up. Not a fan of fish oil. Even the best companies that do it right, it's just not the same as eating the fish. Once, once the oil mixes with your stomach acids and warm body temperature, so different than actually eating the fish. That's the oil that's actually in the fish, the whole fish. That's the better way to do it. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, but crazily enough, there are some people out there that don't like fish. And I'm like, mind blown How by this, dare this you information. I don't understand <laughs> it. So that's when I'm like, okay, I will recommend supplementation to you because omega-3s are definitely necessary. And even if you eat grass-fed and grass-finished beef, like there are some omega-3 fatty acids in there for sure. I call it the land fish. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's definitely not as much as salmon or other fish like mackerel and um, sardines and stuff like that. But not very many people are just going to, you know, sit with a can of sardines and eat them, except me, because I love those too. Oh, you do? Um, wow. Sardines are terrific for you, yeah. Oh, gosh, I love them. I'll mix them with salmon. Why not? So um, <laughs> anyways, back to the farm-raised versus the wild-caught. Another thing with wild-caught salmon is, um, you know, it's not regulated. So you don't necessarily know what exactly it's eating, which obviously uh, a majority of the time they're eating, you know, things in the marine life. So that's great. But, you know, there's a lot of toxins that have been put in the water these days. So their mercury levels are, you know, shooting through the roof these days, especially because wild salmon, well, farm salmon too, but wild salmon is huge. They're big fish. They can get up to a hundred pounds. Like that's insane. Um, and wow, a hundred pounds. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, king salmon. That's why it's called the king. Mm. Um, but Big fish hold mercury, which is why they say, yeah. like, don't eat a lot of swordfish or any swordfish at all because those mm -hmm. are huge fish, and they actually live longer. And when you live longer, you absorb more mercury and blah, 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 blah. So um, anyway, and then on top of that, wild salmon is actually being overfished these days, thus causing it to be more expensive. Mm. And, and I just I, – I, I find it mind-blowing that – um, king salmon can go for $30 a pound and I, and it looks disgusting in a display case because it's been previously frozen and not even thought all the way through most of the time when they're displaying it and it doesn't taste good. I'm like, wow. why would I buy this garbage garbage? Cause I, I can't discredit salmon. Um, <laughs> this luscious farm salmon over here that, you know, has been fed things that only enhance its health properties and looks amazing and tastes great, that's $12.99 or less per pound. Good point. Absolutely. Yeah. Good point. And, so, and um, yeah. go ahead, continue. Well, I was just going to say, just to reiterate, like it's all about doing your research as to where the, fit, the salmon comes from. Like I was at Kroger earlier today in my new state mm -hmm. and they had just these random packages of farmed salmon and they had a QR code on it for find out more recipes here. So I scanned it because I wanted to know where this fish came from. 
Um, and so now I have that information so I can do more research because it's from a company called like Presidential or something. I've actually never heard of this company before. So I was going to do a little bit more digging to figure out what this is all about. However, I was told that Quarry Arctic does supply to Kroger. Um, mm. And this is sort of, they said they've been in Kroger's for a little while now. So that's exciting. Um, so it, it, it's just more available to people because a lot of people think that Whole Foods, oh, it's whole paycheck, uh, but Whole Foods prices and some like uh, Kroger prices in terms of fish are pretty much even. What about um, the company Seatopia? Have you looked into them at all? I have looked into them. I believe that they only sell wild salmon. Got it. And, and I... As much as I'd like to try it, I don't like the fact that they do the subscription where you have to buy all of the fish in the box. Because, as you know, I only really want to eat salmon. Um, <laughs> so I would prefer to create a box versus being like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to get this cod that I don't care about. Or, you know, these, these shrimp that actually I personally shouldn't be eating shrimp. My allergy test told me I should not eat shrimp, but I, I like it, so I'll eat it once in a while. <laughs> so that's that's my thoughts on um, Seatopia. What about U.S. Wellness Meats? Oh, I love – well, I love U.S. Wellness Meats for their meat. So their mm -hmm. fish supplier was Vital Choice Seafoods. And since Vital Choice only carries wild salmon, I actually eat just their sable fish and their Chilean sea bass – and you know they're they're canned sardines and mackerel uh they also have some some ahi tuna and stuff in there that i really like as well but i don't eat their salmon because i just personally i just don't want to do wild salmon i just don't i don't care for it what are the what are creative ways to you have a lot of recipes and and your posts on instagram that are terrific about creative ways to use salmon one of them that i loved the idea was using taco shells with salmon skin. Could you explain how you do that? Yeah. So that's actually a recipe in my book, Seduced by Salmon. Um, basically what I do is I'll skin the fish, obviously. And then I actually bought these taco shell holders that are metal so I can put them in the air fryer. So I would shape them like a taco and I would put it in the air fryer for 400 degrees for like 15 minutes or something to get it nice and crispy. And then the nice thing is you can, you know, the world's your oyster when it comes to what you want to put in them. But what I like to do is sort of create a, a poke, like a salmon poke mm. with some avocado, some tamari sauce, sesame seeds, uh, a little ginger. And then when the uh, salmon skin comes out, I will just put that in there, maybe sprinkle a little, you know, little green onion on it if you if you want that uh, or or maybe a little like uh chili peppers i personally don't like spicy food but you know some people do like that stuff so hot sauce whatever you want so put that on there and then you just eat it like a taco um mm. it's truly magical you will be saying to yourself if you're eating alone or even with other people around oh my god this is so good <laughs> That sounds delicious. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. And then the nice thing, though, too, is, as I said, you can put other things in there. Like if you wanted to get rid of a can of sardines you had in your pantry, put that in the taco shell or the salmon skin shell or, you know, use scallops or put chicken in it, whatever. Put your beef burger in there if you want. What a, what a, what a, is another way to use um, a creative use of salmon? What is another favorite method of yours? So I actually went to Los Angeles earlier this year, and I went to this grocery store because I like to eat at grocery stores for meals. That's just what I like to do because I it's like I just think it's simple. And I found these salmon belly burgers, and salmon mm. belly is the fatty, fattiest part of salmon. It's kind of like pork belly or bacon, if you will. Um, and I ate them and they were the most magical things I think I've ever eaten mm. from a grocery store or anywhere that I didn't create. And I went home and I was like, I need to recreate this. So I took salmon belly, I put it in a blender, which is like sacrilege for me. I'm like, do not ruin the belly, but I did it. I was like, just, just do, just do it. <laughs> so I put it in there. I put some, uh, I put an Asian flair to it because that's what it, what it like involved, like rice, wine, vinegar, 
Uh, I put some tamari in there. I put some sesame oil, se um, some sesame seeds, the green onions, the ginger, the garlic, salt and pepper, made it into patties and I cooked it up and it was, I think mine wow. was better. That being said, if you have canned canned salmon or if you have wild salmon that you're like, oh, great, I have to eat this. <laughs> you, can do, you can do this exact same recipe with that and just put it in the blender. Just You might need to add a little bit more of the sesame oil to you know, create a stick, a sticking agent, if you will. I mean, you, I think I threw an egg in there, too, to create a binding agent. Um, and then you get rid of your salmon that way, and it's delicious, as opposed to you know just roasting it in the oven, the wild salmon, roasting it in the oven, and it coming out dry. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's a creative way that I like. I've created, um, salmon cinnamon buns before. I what? actually, I know it's on Instagram. It's kind of funny. I, I have this salmonify all of the things. So <laughs> next up, I'm going to make salmon pop tarts. Bear with me. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go <laughs> with this, but we're going to do wow. it. Wow. Uh, I made salmon popcorn. I have a recipe for salmon croutons coming out. Um, I made salmon spaghetti where the salmon is the spaghetti. So I sliced it into like spaghetti strips. I ne I didn't cook it because if I cooked it, it would have, um, just cut up into pieces. So I cut it into strips and I made like a, an Italian esque type dish where it was just olive oil, garlic, and some parsley and a little red pepper flakes in there. Uh, insane, insanely good, uh, with olive oil. I think I mentioned that. Uh, anyway, so there was that idea. Um, I, I made like ranch ranch nuggets, which are really good. I have a lot, a lot of recipes that I'm very fond of. And when I eat them, I'm like, wow, wow, I'm patting myself on the back here. Yeah, I love that you experiment. And your, your Instagram has a lot of these recipes. Your book's going to have a lot of them. Seduced yeah. by Salmon, perfect name. What, do you have an, um, a timeline for when that will be released? Um. It's, it's hard to say right now. Right now I'm shopping around for publishers. I was going to self-publish and then uh, I got a second wind and was like, nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to look for some publishers just because I, I, I want help getting it out there, getting the word out there because I, I really, truly, 100% believe in this book, love it so much. It's like, it's my baby. I actually started writing it last January, January, 2021. And then I got oh. pregnant and I couldn't eat salmon for 12 weeks. I couldn't eat it. Oh, um, wow. so I stopped like, writing the book. That must've been rough for you. <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. And why then you were, I, you were getting nauseous when you had it? Yeah. I just couldn't even think about it. I couldn't mm. think about it. I couldn't go to whole foods. I couldn't. Yeah. I would eat uh, during both pregnancies. I craved beef. So I was just eating burgers. But then around the 12, 13 week mark, I started eating salmon again and I felt okay. Um, and then I started to continue writing the book, I think like last July, um, because I actually had a publishing company in mind, but then I, it didn't work out for multiple reasons. And I was, again, as I said, I was going to self-publish. In fact, I have the full manuscript all laid out. I've got all of the recipes. It's literally on Instagram, uh, not Instagram. It's on Amazon right now. All I have to do is press publish. Mm -hmm. But I, I just, I really wanted to shop around a little bit more for publishing companies. So I get that uh, question for you. What was more difficult the 12 weeks without the salmon or giving birth? <laughs> the Probably fact that you have to think about that. Salmon. Uh, well, <laughs> both births were interesting. I mean, labor is no joke, but <laughs> labor also doesn't last 12 weeks. So That's true. I would say, I would say going without salmon, honestly, because it's like, I wanted it, but also <laughs> then the thought of it was like, oh no. What oh, torture. No. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Whereas, you know, labor for my second one lasted 20 minutes. So it's like, okay, I can oh, wow. get through 20 minutes. So, That's yeah. wonderful. 20 minutes. Okay. What's the deal with tilapia? Oh God. Garbage fish. Garbage. That's right. Oh. Why? Yeah. It's so high in omega-6 fatty acids. It's like, it's like, 
pork. I mean, obviously free range pork is fine, but you know, this conventionally raised pork that eats anything, it has very high omega-6 uh, fatty acids versus omega-3. And if you guys don't know this, it's really good to get this ratio as close to one to one as humanly possible in terms of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. Uh, but a lot of times people diet, people's diets are like one to 16. So one being the omega-3, 16 being the omega-6, uh, because people are so reliant on seed oils like sunflower oil or soybean oil. And that's what yeah. um, restaurants use because it's the cheaper oil. So tilapia has those types of things. I literally consider it to be the pig of the fish. It will Good. eat anything, and thus its health benefits are null and void. Yeah, agreed. Stay away from that. And yeah. if you don't like salmon or your salmon's not your thing, I encourage you to try these creative recipes, and you might have a different thought process. Different I have, ways to make it. I've absolutely changed people's minds in terms of salmon. I believe I'm it. very, very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm convinced whenever someone says I don't like salmon, it's because they've only been eating wild salmon. Mm -hmm. Because all of these headlines say eat wild salmon over farmed. Um, and all of these big influencers that get, you know, that are heard by a lot of people, they're not, I mean, I'm not going to discredit their education, but they're not insanely well versed in farmed salmon practices. They only have this thinking from the 1970s and 1980s of what farmed salmon was versus what it is now. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful that like quarry Arctic and ocean salmon and Maui salmon and all that kind of stuff, they're really starting to try and educate people on sustainable practices when it comes to farming salmon. Like right now it's blue food month with Quarry Arctic. I'm actually working with them throughout this month. It's national seafood month. Ha -ha. Mm. And it's my self-proclaimed national or not national, but self-proclaimed salmon month because salmon day is on October 8th. Oh, um, wow. I know it should <laughs> Three be days my away. birthday. That, that should <laughs> oh, be, that would be, that would be perfect if that was your birthday. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my goodness. Anyways, um, so basically, they're they're all just trying to get the word out that farmed salmon mm -hmm. is really not the devil, if you will. Yeah. No, that's good. You know, and it's it's changed my mind um, because I was one of those people saying stay away from farm, don't only eat wild. But to your point, that's not the case anymore. That doesn't mean all farmed is good. You got to do your due diligence. But exactly. farming can be great. And to your point, so thank you for, you know, changing my mind on that too. So you're doing some good do job uh, preaching the, we'll call it the salmon metabolism. <laughs> good job. <Woo! laughs> okay. Let's transition now to your, your, one of your books, which is called She Does Keto, The Complete Ketogenic Diet for Women. Why did you decide to write a book for uh, keto for women specifically? What was the idea behind that? It's actually interesting. A publishing company reached out to me and they saw that I had been living a ketogenic lifestyle for a long time. They saw that I had my master's in nutrition and that I've been, you know, subtly educating people on the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm not the type of person to like throw it in your face saying, hey, do it, do it, do it. I, I definitely just like, you know, put a couple words in here and there and people will DM me and then we'll have discussions. But um, so this publishing company reached out to me and they asked me if I'd want to write a book about the ketogenic lifestyle directly relating to women and how it's beneficial for them. And of course I jumped at that opportunity because number one, I always wanted to write a book. And number two, I truly believe that this diet, or I don't want to say diet, I want to say lifestyle, lifestyle. Yeah. uh, this lifestyle is so insanely beneficial for so many people for varying reasons but women specifically, because I really believe that it helps with hormonal levels. It really, it, it calms your hormones down, uh, to put it in layman's terms, if you will. Um, and then, you know, it helps with endometrius and PCOS and, and then it, it helps with weight loss, believe it or not, guys. Um, and with your, with women and their hormones, hormones are typically what cause women to gain weight if they have no idea what's causing the weight gain, if they haven't changed their eating regime or anything like that. So with the ketogenic low-carb lifestyle, 
as I said, it calms your hormones down, thus it helps your metabolism kick into high gear again, and it helps you lose weight. Um, so I jumped at that opportunity, and it actually, it helped me too, because it helped me research that area even more, thus I learned more about why this lifestyle is beneficial for women, uh, specifically. It's obviously beneficial for men too, but you know, if they came at me being like, hey, would you write um, a ketogenic lifestyle book for men? I'd say, well, no. Well, I, I would try, but also <laughs> no, because I'm not a guy. Yeah. Uh, and I just, I feel like it needs to be, uh, in order for it to be taken seriously, a, a guy has to write it. Um, and then on top of that, I, I wrote, created 115 recipes in this book as well. Um, and those recipes obviously can be for anybody. The one thing that I would change about that book, not that you asked, but I <laughs> thought about it, is uh, some of those recipes were heavily reliant on like coconut flour or mm -hmm. almond flour because, you know, a lot of people want those replacements for, for bread. But I live the cleanest ketogenic lifestyle. I eat salmon. I eat spinach. I eat beef. I eat chicken. I don't eat flowers. I don't eat sweeteners, although I am chewing gum, so I will. That's my one vice, guys. Get over it. <laughs> um, and I drink Monster Energy Drink, the sugar-free Ultra Zero. I know there's sucralose in it, but <laughs> live your life, people. There are certain things that I'm just not going to give up. Sorry. But, like, I'm not going to add or I'm not going to make, like, a, a, a coconut flour pancake. But, however, I do have a recipe for that in my book. Um, but, like, my Seduced by Salmon cookbook has none of that stuff in it. Mm. It might have a little bit of, like, swerve here and there for, you know, just to enhance, you know, a, a sweet, savory dish. But I'm not putting flowers galore in places. I'm not using fake products that you buy at the store, like breads and taco shells because salmon's good. <laughs> um, and tortillas and what have you. So that's the one thing that if I could go back in time, I would recreate those recipes without those ingredients. Yeah. Well, you kind of did with the new book, so it'll be good yeah. to get that out there. I agree. It's better to have it without the flowers and uh, too many artificial sweeteners. So I'm glad the new book has that. Hopefully the new book comes out sooner rather than later. I'm sure there's going to be a publisher who's like, yeah, I want to pick that up. Um, so we'll be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, your book, She Does Keto is on Amazon. Your website is GG. Is it GG Eat Celebrities? That's still your website. Yeah, it's you... still my website. I, I didn't feel like changing the link. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. And your Instagram is at GG Eats. You also have a great YouTube channel, uh, which is fun. We're gonna put links for everything down below. Anywhere else you want the keto campers to go check you out? No, I mean I'm on Instagram twenty four seven. My life is just broadcasted on those stories. So there I am. <laughs> Yeah, Instagram would probably be the best place to check you out and, and uh, communicate with you. And Got a big following on there. Said, new recipes are coming down the pipeline on my Instagram. Like I have a whole bunch, obviously, in the book that I'm hopefully it will come out soon. But I'll continue to put out more new recipes for salmon and other things uh, on my Instagram page. So I love that. We'll put that down below. Final question is regarding my favorite supplement in the world. It's not fish oil. It's uh, vitamin G. I call it gratitude. So vitamin G. And my question to you, Gigi, is what are you grateful for today? What is the vitamin G you want to take today? I'm grateful, and this is going to sound kind of kind of cheesy, but I, I'm, I'm truly grateful that my family is healthy. Mm, I mean, yeah, without but... health, you have nothing. So you have to be grateful that you that you have it. So true. Yeah. Health, you hear all the time, health is wealth and it's, it's true. I mean, yeah. it's everything. So yeah, I'm grateful for that for you. That's amazing. And uh, also grateful for, for today's conversation. You really, Jane, gave us a, a salmon paradigm shift. <laughs> so hopefully the audience is inspired to eat more salmon and explore farm raised the right way. We'll put links for the companies you mentioned down below as well. And Gigi, yeah, thank you for coming on the show and educating us on salmon today. Well, I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much.